So why balance test here, which is checking balance and stability at your end ranges of motion. I'm trying to push each box out as far as I can. One difference with our motor control screen, your heel can come up. We really don't care how you do it as long as you go down under control and come back to the start position. There's a lot of information we have on this. One of the best tests that we don't talk about a lot, we got a lot of research and a lot of data on this. So if you deal with athletes or high levels individuals, you definitely need to add this in to some of your testing. Now, especially when you're looking at return to play criteria for athletes after an injury. Definitely want to look at this. You can actually enter this data into our software, use our Mood to Perform software to gauge injury risk based off your results of your Y balance test and a few more data points. So I just showed you an example of how we do our Y balance test, which is looking at those three different directions at the end ranges of stability. Now, once you collect that data, that data can be combined with your previous injuries, pain that a person may have, pain with the FMS, ankle mobility, and then your Y balance test score results. And we have a specific way we score it, asymmetries, and then we can even compare that to your peer group. And this information can actually give you your injury risk using our Move to Perform software. So definitely recommend you going in and checking that out, but you gotta collect this other data and enter that data in as well to be able to give you what the research says will be able to give you the cut points as it relates to injury risk. And also it's important that when we get your scores, when you enter that data in, you can actually compare it to your peer group. So if I'm a basketball player and I wanna know how I compare to my other basketball players, this report that Mood to Perform will generate for you will give you all of that information. Now, here's what the biobalance test doesn't necessarily do. It doesn't tell you what to do about it. So if I'm scoring lower, than I need to be based off my peers. And if I'm in this injury risk category, I then need to figure out what to do about it. That's why here at FMS, we call ourselves a systematic approach, not just doing a bunch of testing. Because now once I do this, maybe return to play, maybe when a person comes in to see me, now I may need to do an FMS, may need to look at our functional wellness screen, combining movements with lifestyle to see if there's some other things that we may actually be leading to having some of these problems. If I've got sleep problems, I got stress in my life, I got a poor ankle mobility, all of that, poor shoulder mobility, all of that can be even connected to giving me a poor Y balance test result. If I've got pain, I may need to do an SFMA to figure out what I need to do. So the Y balance test is a great test. A lot of research tells us a lot about the person, can give us some good injury risk, can give us some good cut points. But if we really want to dive in and figure out how to improve it, we've got to do some other screens or other assessments to give us a more detailed idea of how I can fix the problem.